Hi, and welcome to this introduction to quantitative decision modeling. This will be a, certainly a unique experience for all of us, but I think that we'll be able to manage nicely. So what I want to do is I want to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the content that we hope to cover. Um, and in addition to the content, give you an idea of some of the things that will be expected from you as we embark on this kind of a new journey for all of us. So let me start by kind of giving you an idea of some of the objectives in the course. So some of the things that we're going to be doing are all related to types of models that you actually interact with every single day in your life anyway. Uh, you may not know it, but you certainly do. So that's kind of an interesting thing about this class. But what we ultimately want to get at is to for you to be able to identify business problems um, that can be solved using some of these quantitative techniques. So these problems come from all kinds of different areas, whether we're talking about finance, we're in operations, accounting, information systems, uh, just about any kind of uh, business problem that you can imagine may be able to be solved with some of these techniques that we're going to get into. So it become really powerful for solving a broad range of problems. <clears throat> so most of what we're going to be getting into really deal with things related to simulation and optimization. So that's where we're, we're going to focus the bulk of our attention. So another kind of key objective in this course is for you to be able to model and solve these problems with R. Mostly R. We may have the opportunity to get into Python at some point, but we'll definitely be sticking with R for the most part. So if some of you will have had um, some R experience or some programming experience before. Others of you may not have, and for those of you who may not have, that's okay. Uh, we'll be able to manage just fine as we as we kind of work through some of this. It may feel like punishment at first, uh, but you'll quickly come around to, to figuring out that it's it will be for your own good. Um, so not only is it helpful to build the skill, uh, but there's also a very pragmatic purpose for it, uh, and that it always looks good on a resume to have that you know a little bit of programming, right? Um, very much in the same way that people around my age uh, will, you know, make, make little jokes about the older person who doesn't know how to use Excel. We'll get to the point where that same person will be made fun of for not knowing how to program. So knowing a little bit of programming will certainly serve you in the long run. Uh, you may not develop <clears throat> extreme expertise, uh, but, but picking up on it will only serve to help. So that's, a, that's kind of a, a goal here. And then also, uh, kind of the last goal is just improving your quantitative problem solving skills. If we think about what some of the models that we need to get into, uh, it's going to take you a little bit of practice in terms of actually formulating the problem, how best to even set it up to solve. And once we get into that, you'll, you'll get the practice of being able to work uh, kind of mentally through a problem to see how to set it up to solve it. In terms of textbooks for this course, there are no textbooks, which is great. Um, we are in the fortunate place where all the stuff that we're going to do, uh, really there has been so much good stuff written and put out online that we don't really need to, to rest on a textbook uh, to give us the information. We can go uh, find it anywhere we would want to online. So I'll, I'll periodically be posting readings for you all to get into and to get a feel for it. Again, if you want to get a little bit deeper into some of this stuff, that's great. Um, if you just want to be able to go through the notes, that's fine too. Uh, there's going to be a lot of resources for you available for getting some of that stuff done. Uh, I have links in the syllabus for R and R Studio. You'll need both. It's a good idea to have both for sure. Um, you could get by with just R, but R Studio makes your life a lot easier. So if you download R Studio, you certainly need to have R come along with it. Um, and again, we'll, we'll work through that as we, as we get into it. Every week, we're going to have some kind of little class exercise. These are relatively low stakes, just a couple questions here and there uh, about what we have gotten into, whatever that topic may be. But these are just to make sure that you, that for you to understand that you're kind of picking up on the content, you know how to use it, you know how to apply it, you know what you're getting out of it. Uh, especially since we won't have the opportunity to be together at least for a few weeks, it's going to be a good idea for you to really engage in these things to get a good feel for them. Uh, there will be homework throughout our time together. Um, 
these homeworks will all be done in R. You'll want to use R Markdown for doing them. Uh, I'll have a tutorial for R Markdown for you, so don't feel like you're out of the loop on that or anything like that. Uh, most of you may not have used it to this point, and that's okay. It'll take a little bit of time, but once you kind of get into it, it becomes second nature and it becomes easier, and you'll see the value in using it. Again, that's something that we'll that we'll get into a little bit later on. Um, and the homeworks are a little bit unique in that the way they're set up, they are set up with tiers. So there's a bronze tier, a silver tier, and a gold tier. Um, if you essentially think of bronze tier being the, the B level, right? It means you've understood everything, you, you get what you're doing, um, you can use it, you can apply it. And as you work up through the silver and gold tiers, you see that you probably have a deeper understanding and ability to use these tools. So again, how you take them is kind of going to be up to you and the time you want to put into them. I understand, especially given the, the unique situation we find ourselves in, that um, you know, time may be kind of weird at this point. So we'll do what, you, do what we can and, and get through this. So if you need to work together, if you have the opportunity, the ability to work together on assignments, I'm completely fine with that. Your work does need to be your own, though. And what I mean by that is that you really need to use your own words to explain your outcomes. Code can be the same, right? Code is fine. But if you're if you're copying and pasting each other's words, that's where things will start to, to become a little bit of a problem. Uh, we will have a midterm in this class that will require a little bit of programming. It won't be overly dramatic in terms of the amount of programming that needs to be done, but the scope of it will be pretty limited to a few key topics. So don't feel like you're going to have to be an expert programmer by the time the midterm rolls around. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. So don't worry about it. Uh, we'll make it through. Uh, the midterm will be, again, pretty limited in scope. So nothing, nothing to really worry about there. The next part, though, is going to be a little bit more on the difficult side. Um, if we have the opportunity to get together at a decent time before the end of the mod, then we will have some kind of group presentations. Uh, these group presentations are, are more fun than, uh, than a lot of work. You will have ample class time to work on these group presentations. My goal is not for you to spend tons and tons of time outside of class doing them. I will give you plenty of time in the class to complete them. If, however, we're not able to get together, we're probably going to have to do some kind of standard final examination. Uh, that's not ideal uh, for me or for you, but it's probably what we'll have to do. So we're just going to have to play that by ear to see what we can actually get done in the time that we have. So we'll, we'll just so get, kind of play that by ear. So nothing, nothing, to, nothing to worry about at this point, and we'll, we'll just keep each other informed as to where things are going to be during that time. So over the next few or the next few uh, class sessions, we're going to get into uh, an R tutorial and an R Markdown tutorial. Again, this is enough just to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to give you some resources that you can also use uh, to kind of get up and running with these things if you haven't already used them in the past. From there, we're going to move into process simulation. So process simulation gives us the ability to look at any given process. Uh, and see how it runs, not only to see how it runs, but also to test changes that we may want to make to it. Um, if we're in a world where uh, making changes can impose a high cost and we don't know what the outcome is gonna be, it may be a little bit on the dangerous side just to start making those changes. So process simulation gives us a way to make those changes in a very low stakes environment to see how they may improve or how they may hurt process. So it's a pretty cool and powerful technique for exploring how to best work through a process and how to make improvements to it and what those improvements may ultimately do. From there, we're going to get into linear programming. So linear programming is something that, uh, while you may not know it, you encounter every single day, uh, whether you are watching television, whether you are using your mobile device, whether you're using your computer, whether you're driving here, you have engaged in some kind of uh, thing that's been solved by linear programming. So linear programming also uh, tends to fall under, under the broad uh, umbrella of optimization. So how do we best uh, allocate resources that are limited to some kind of problem? And that's what linear programming is going to get for us. After we get through linear programming, we'll have the midterm to deal with. 
Uh, so we'll spend a little, we'll have a little bit of review time for letting your program in uh, and process simulation so you have a good idea of how those things work, how to implement them, and how to make sense out of them. And then finally, we'll get into the midterm. Uh, again, the midterm, you're going to have ample time to, to deal with. Um, if we are back by that point, which we probably won't be, it'll be done in class. If not, you'll have time uh, to complete the midterm uh, digitally. So either way, it will work just fine. Uh, no matter what we do, though, your midterm will be open book, open note, open resource. So don't feel like this is stuff you have to have memorized uh, you'll have plenty of resources to be able to complete it no matter what the mode is that we'll, we'll, we'll be completing it. So no real worries there. Uh, from there, after that, we're going to get into a few different things. We're going to get into network models, integer programming, and nonlinear programming. So those are all essentially extensions to that linear programming stuff that we had previously, uh, would have previously talked about. Uh, we will then wrap up uh, in terms of content with simulation. So you'll see some, some pretty strong similarities between process simulation and the simulation stuff we're going to talk about. The simulation goes a little bit deeper than what that process simulation would. So uh, we'll, get in, we'll have the ability to get into things more like Monte Carlo simulation and how that works and then also how we can use those techniques to, again, solve business problems. Beyond that, though, we will get into, um, hopefully, the opportunity to work on projects as a group. If not, then we'll just spend time uh, reviewing these things for our presentation, or uh, for the final exams, excuse me. Um, and that is what we'll, we'll ultimately get into. Um, so that's, the, that's what we have on tap for this course. Um, Again, we are kind of in a unique situation here, uh, kind of uncharted territory for most of us. Again, that's fine. We'll make it through together. Um, one of those where communication will be important for all of us to kind of work through and see how we, uh, how we can best get through this together. So whether we're together uh, in person or together digitally, I look forward to, uh, to, 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 to embarking on this together. Um, this is a fun course. Uh, all of the stuff is relevant for anything that you may choose to do. Knowing about optimization and simulation uh, is something that will never go out of style, no matter what we're doing, no matter where things like machine learning end up taking us or deep nets or anything fancy like that. They all have a background in this stuff, and knowing this stuff will always serve you very well. So I look forward to getting into it together, and I look forward to spending time together. And this should be a good time. I'll see you next time.